I also want to bring up something that I think you're doing wrong, which is you are you are taking these amnesty reports, human rights watch reports, and the various UN organization reports as something to not throw out. And I think Norman Finkelstein is going to make the plausible sure, tell case me the of easy, genocide. Tell me the easy, yeah, what's the easy debunk? Most of the Jews died within uh, within 41, 42. Sure, because I think that's when they moved to like the death camps and the hyper um, efficient. Because no, that's ways. when they took over the territory where the Jews were. Living. Okay, so you're telling me that they cremated the bodies for fun? Why did they cremate all the bodies? Then you saying that they've got the capacity to kill a ton of people, but they haven't is not an argument in any capacity what, way whatsoever. I'm never making this no, argument publicly. It, I'm going to look no. like an idiot. That's a foolish argument. If you want to make, you go make it on Twitter. Let me for a second state my uh, argument again because you misconstrued it. Okay. What if they said so if we want to kill as many Palestinians as possible? We think we can probably. And only... then they sat on their hands and killed no and one. Then, that and then they be think, genocide. well, they haven't killed no one. They've killed almost thirty thousand people. Okay, first I want to discuss what you were talking about before, whether Jews are allowed or not allowed. If you travel the West Bank, you'll see these red signs all over saying Jews forbidden. Okay. Well, wait, are you like Jewish or? What she was saying before where Jews are allowed to enter and they're not allowed to enter. Type in on Google red signs, Jews forbidden. You'll see them all over the West Bank. Yeah, these signs are all over. These are for area A. No, these are for area A, B, and C. I, mean, wait, I wait, 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 wait. What do you mean they're for area C? I was in Tekoa. I was in Tekoa. Wait, so there are signs saying that Jews can't go into area C where they have a whole bunch of settlements? Into, into Arab villages, yes, because if they did, they would be lynched. Okay, can you can you show me one of these red signs for like area C where it says you can't even go into area C? Okay, uh Could you find out which area Tekoa is in? Well, you said you lived there, didn't you? Tekoa, how do you spell it? I think it's T K O A Israel. T K O A Israel. Oh, Tekoa. I don't believe that's area A. Area A is the big cities. Um, it really doesn't say here. Oh, fuck me. All right, let's see. Well, it's, it's in the illegal territory, but it's not in area A, I'm pretty sure, because... Well, but I think the UN like, considers even Area C like illegal or whatever, doesn't they? So, no, I agree. My point is that you will find entry forbidden to Jews in every single area, and Area A is exclusively forbidden to Jews. You can't even enter on penalty of death. Okay, sure, but like you, well, when you say I can't enter under penalty of death, it's just saying it'd be dangerous for you to enter, right? Do you hear me? I can hear you now, yeah. This says, um, as okay, part of the sorry, Arab al like, Tamira uh, village was... cluster, along with Zatara, Beit Tamir, whatever, uh, and Alana, Tuku has a municipal district of over 191,000 Dunhams, but its built-up area consists of 590 Dunhams, as 98.5% of the village's land was classified as Area C, and 1.5% as Area B in the 1995 Accords. Okay, so my first point was that... Okay, go for it. In every single area, entry for Jews either is wholly forbidden or partially forbidden. Okay, for area A and B, that's probably true. But go ahead. What's the next Well, to, if the code is in area C, then it's true for area I, there's C. There's no too. way what you're saying is true about area C. I can't believe that. There's just no possible way that's I didn't, true. I didn't say entry to area C. Entry to villages in area C is forbidden. Oh, that might be true. I don't know. That might be true. Okay. Uh, so okay, what's Pretty next? much the rule of thumb is that if, if it's an Arab area... Jews are forbidden from entry. Okay. Forbidden by law, and if they entered, they'd probably be lynched. Okay, that's pretty or extreme, kidnapped. but okay. It's not extreme. That's that's what would happen. Well, how many Jews have been lynched or kidnapped because they went into areas A They don't go because they follow the directions of the signs. Okay, except for the people that are building outposts or whatever in opposition to the IDF and to the Palestinian Authority. They're not going into a clustered village. 
like ran uh, like two people driving into a like misturning into there's stories of people misturning into a village and getting lynched do you have any i'm just curious do you have like an example from the sure, last like uh, decade Jerry, or? well i know i know the famous story with um ramallah with those two soldiers that yeah that was in wrong that was in ramallah but that was like allowed, yeah that was like police station that was like and they're yeah that was like 24 years ago yes the ramallah well, that's lynching. the one at the top of my mind because you won't you how, won't wait, have okay hold on how old are you there's a reason why entry for jews is forbidden why do you think that is sure but wait but i'm just curious how old are you i am 26 okay so i don't know if you would even remember the ramallah lynchings so i don't know why that would be the one at the top of your mind if jews that go into any of these areas would regularly oh, get would... like lynched or killed like i'm just curious if this i'm not denying that it, it could happen i'm sure it could i know there's violence in the west bank but i'm just curious like if this is like a regular occurrence or if it happens where if like like jews are getting killed or lynched like in areas okay, i'll give you a very recent example there's this youtuber named uh the Stuki. He's like very pro um, Palestinian Arab. He goes, he sneaks into the, like their areas, and recently he tried doing that. And someone got a win that he was a Jew. Like he speaks Arabic. Someone got a win he was a Jew, and they tried to go after him. He escaped, but they were trying to kill him. He has a video about it, and he's like very pro, showing the other side. He has a YouTube channel called. Um, let me try to pull it up. Joshua. Shuki, maybe, yeah. Vogue of Israeli Jew entering the West Bank. Okay. For the first time in my life, I'm wanted. This uh, picture of me and I... Oh, my God. So he recently had a, he had a live stream where he's talking about how they were... That he, that he had a near miss with death. Because Jews don't do this, generally speaking, because they don't want to die. So you won't have a lot of stories of it. The only Jews that would do it is like these like left wing activists that go with a group and they're protected, obviously. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I'm just what's going on this video. Okay. Um, okay. Is the video uh, linked up with the voice? This, oh, no, you can't hear it. Um, okay, I got your point on this. Okay. Um, I accept that Jews probably aren't allowed to go into areas A or B, or shouldn't be, or it might be dangerous. Sure. Um, what is that? Or villages? You said Arab villages in Area C. Um, well, before she was saying that uh, there's no prohibition on Jews' entry. Not only there's no there's prohibition. Well, I don't know. Is on, there in every level? Um, it's against Israeli law. It's against Palestinian law, and it's against uh, your uh, odds of survival. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Assuming those so signs are, said before, assuming those signs also, are correct. I also, yeah. I also want to bring up something that I think you're doing wrong, which is you are you are taking these amnesty reports, UN Rights Watch reports, and the various UN organization reports as something to not throw out immediately. Like, there's no reason why you should put any value in these reports, given the fact that I'll give you an example: United Nations. Just to throw out one stat has, I think, more resolutions on Israel than all other countries in the world combined. So um, obviously an organization like that is not producing reports in good faith. Sure. They m might not be producing reports in good faith. That's possible. But you can still look at the report and look at the underlying evidence reported. Right? Yes. But let's say you go into a debate with Finkelstein and he's going to say, OK, let's say you're arguing about apartheid. He's going to say Amnesty is saying Israel is doing apartheid. This or this human rights is saying Israel is doing apartheid. The UN is saying it. You're going to argue from taking his premise for granted that these reports shouldn't be thrown out. Then you're you're going to have an uphill climb. There's no reason to a priori take these reports for granted. Well, I'm not a priori There's taking no these reports for granted. But you're reports. You, wait, 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 hold on. Taking a priori them as serious would be dumb. I agree. But you want to a priori toss them, right? Like, I'm saying that we should yeah, just... Yeah, unless you have good reason not to, you should apparently toss them. Well, why not just, like... Well, I don't think that... I don't think I, as a YouTuber, streamer, video gamer, coomer, is going to say, like, oh, the UN and Amnesty International and Betsalem are all garbage, but actually the Israeli government is super trustworthy. That makes me sound unbelievably okay, first, unhinged and biased, right? I can't do that. That would first, make me sound okay. retarded. First of all, regarding Betsalem, Betsalem is complete garbage. So it's like a extreme far-left organization in Israel... 
I don't know what the equivalent of the United States would be, but that's what it's considered in Israel. So let's leave what's a good that source. Off. What's but a yeah. good source of Israeli news and information? Are you a fan of like tablet or what do we? Well, that's all. not a news source. It's I like understand. The, it's a human, human rights, rights for the occupied territories. Yes, but like um, what's, what's a good source? You could go on Mariv. You could go on Times of Israel. You could go on uh, Yedidot Achronot. Is more the right. No, we only do know. English here. Not, Listen, why not? Why not like look at the underlying rationale that they use, and then go into the to the debate and have the conversation about the underlying rationale, rather than just saying like, oh, well, because, these are all biased. Because I don't I'll, trust I'll these. tell you why. Yeah, I'll tell you why. Because once you do that, you'll be spending your debate trying to defend something against organizations which you should have no reason to defend against. Like, what do you mean? No, the United Nations, the like the largest body yeah, the of United all Nations the countries and the entire fucking planet. Why would I not? Why would I not want to deal with something the United Nations says? Does it not behoove right, everyone take, to be? Let's take the UN orgs. Uh, do you know what UN Human Rights Watch is like? Human Rights, UN Human Rights Council? Yeah, the HRC. What about it? What do you think about it? Um, I mean, it's not as bad as UNRWA. <laughs> it's not as bad as UNRWA. It's not as bad as UNRWA? <laughs> yeah. It's pretty much the same. Um, you, so you would toss out every you know single who sits thing? on the council? What, Syria or? No, it's like majority made up of dictatorships. Sure. And you know, you yes, have, I've, 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 you yes. know, you, I'm familiar. I, listen, you know what percentages of the reports are on Israel compared to other countries? Listen, this st- the style of argumentation where you find reasons to discredit the reporting agencies is not something that I it care much to engage in. If the reporting is bad or if the reports are biased, then I would rather just analyze why the reports themselves are biased. So, for instance, I think the okay. Goldstone report is garbage, not because it comes from biased people or from the UN, because I think, but because I think the applications of international law are incredibly incorrect, or because the way that they uh, gathered information I thought was incredibly incorrect. I'd rather be able to say that than just say, "Oh, I don't trust this because it came from the UN." I don't think that's a good argument. I don't think okay. it's a convincing argument. That okay, first in the in the abstract in the ideal that might be nice, but if you're having a two-hour debate. And you're going to be bombarded with uh, amnesty reports, UN human ri- human rights reports, and you're just going to try to first try to analyze these reports. You're just going to fight an uphill battle to, at the end, say maybe Israel is bad, but not as bad. I don't think I am fighting an uphill battle. I think it's an incredibly important battle. I'd rather make them fight it. If they think that these reports are good, then tell, say why. Don't just cite the report because then I'll just cite the IDF, no, and then we're at nowhere. Why not just say like, First, they should have to explain why you should have th- these reports should have any credibility whatsoever. Well, they're going to say, well, because we agree with the underlying argumentation. If that's the case, then they shouldn't. Because usually, when Norman Finkel signed debates, he says, uh, "Like I just saw him recently with uh, I think it was uh, Shmuley Boteach, and mm-hmm. he says, Amnesty Internet. Like he's not citing reports; he's just quoting the organizations sure. as to puff up his argument." And if he does that with you, what are you going to say? You're going to say, okay, let's go by report by report. And if they say Israel's apartheid, what are you going to say then? Uh, I mean, I would look at the underlying reason for why Amnesty International says Israel's apartheid. That's why I've got the... You're going to read the report mid-debate? No, I'm, that's what I'm doing right now. My debate's not for four days or three days. Okay. And uh, another point I think you should bear in mind, I watched your debate with Jenk. I think you had two of them. Mm-hmm. Right? Did you? I think so, yeah. I think at both debates he brought up genocide, and you briefly countered it, but you mostly let it slide. I think it's, it's trivially easy to debunk the genocide claim. Okay. And I think Norman Finkelstein is going to make that plausible. Sure. Tell me the easy. Genocide. Tell me the easy. Yeah. What's the easy debunk? Okay. Let's assume, for the sake of argument, Israel is attempting to. Commit genocide against the Palestinians. If Israel was attempting to commit genocide with the Palestinians, then by the end of October of last year, there would have not been any Gazan left alive. That's. I mean, I think that's a that's a that's it's that simple. That's a, that's a. I think that's a snappy point to use, like for a Twitter debate. But if we're going to do an in-depth debate about like genocide, that's not going to be. That's not sufficient, right? Because you can have no, genocide. His argument is Israel is trying to kill civilians, which is what a genocide in, entails, That's right? Not what a genocide. No, no, no it has nothing to do with genocide. Genocide is the wholesale destruction of a people with the intent to bring about that people's destruction. It's not just killing a lot of civilians. And the wholesale destruction is another word for killing them. 
Uh, it could be a lot of things. It could be, I think, uh, prevention of births um, is one part of it. It could okay, be like starvation the- or famine, which you might make the argument because so many of them are in famine conditions now. Like you would deal with it on these grounds, not just like, well, they haven't killed them all yet. Therefore, it's not a genocide. Like the way well, that you would prove the crime Israel of genocide is going is, to commit genocide in the future. They're making the claim that Israel has conducted a genocide past tense. Sure, but the the way that you would make that argument for the pro genocide part is you would try to find statements of intent of genocide on behalf of the IDF, and then you would look and see if killings are being carried out that comport to said statements of intent, and that would be the way that you would build towards it, and that would be the way that you would fight against it. It's not just going to be on number of people killed. Um, it would be definitely a number of people killed because it would be on their capacity committed, not just the intent. Like, is like for example, Hamas, their intent is genocidal. Like, for example, every single place they reached into Israel, they killed every single person they could. Communities were like 50% wiped out in the villages they took over. So they have a genocidal intent, but they don't have the capacity to commit genocide against Israel. In Israel's case, they certainly have the capacity, and they had the capacity since day one to wholesalely destroy physically probably every man, woman, and child in Gaza within three weeks. Okay. Um, so the, if okay, their gotcha, intent gotcha. was genocide, right. then you would see it in their actions and you would see the results. Gotcha. I mean, okay. I think it's what is pretty the, simple. I understand. What is the um, next next argument thing? What's your counter argument to that? The, that genocide has nothing to do with number of people killed. Genocide is hyper-focused on the intent, the intentionality aspect of right. okay, You could so, literally wipe out an entire civilization of people, and it wouldn't be genocide, technically. You need the intent there to do it. If Israel were to drop nukes on the Gaza Strip tomorrow, and they're, they're, and you go through all of their military command, and they're like, listen, if we don't nuke the Gaza Strip, Hamas is going to destroy our country. That wouldn't be genocide. If two million Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip died, that wouldn't be genocide. But if Netanyahu said, we need to, we actually do need to kill this entire group of people, um, we need to figure out a way to do this to where people don't, you know, come down on us in the international community, I bet if we move these south, we cut off all the food and water, and we starve them the out until they all die or fucking move away, then I bet we can actually get this done, then that would be a strong argument for genocide. That would be the special intent for genocide. It would be there, and then the actions carried out by individuals would be in the furtherance of said genocide, even if only 30,000 people have died. But the, the genocide is hyper okay. fixated on the intent, not on the number of people killed. I agree with you because some people don't have the capacity to carry it out. You need both, you, you need both the intent Hitler could have killed more the, Jews quicker, but they were fixated also on hiding the number of Jews killed because they wanted to bury a bunch of them. They wanted to gas them and cremate them and blah, 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 blah. Like, what? That's a non sequitur. It's not a non sequitur. Hitler had the capacity to kill more Jews in a quicker way, but because they were trying to hide it because they didn't want... No, he didn't. He actually did it as quick. You know, most of the Jews died within, uh, within 41, 42. Sure, because I think that's when they moved to like the death camps and the hyper um, efficient. Because no, that's ways. when they took over the territory where the Jews were. Living. Okay, so you're telling me that they cremated the bodies for fun? Why did they cremate all the bodies? Because what are you going to do with all the bodies? Bury them? Throw them outside? I don't dump them in a river? I don't know. How G- T- Germany owned how much territory at that point? You don't think that trying first to all, you don't you don't think the you don't think the refusal of, of Hitler all, to to order explicit commands that everybody could see to commit a genocide, or you don't think the fact that they were trying to bury destiny, them or cremate all of them destiny. was evidence trying to hide the crimes? First of all, Destiny, half of, about half of the people the Jews killed in the Holocaust weren't in death camps. They were shot in a bullet in the back of the heads. It was, uh, it's called Holocaust by Bullets. And they weren't, a lot of them weren't cremated. They were just in pits like Bobby R. Pig true, or whatever. Yep, a lot of them Maybe were tossed they, in, yep, a lot of them were tossed in graves. That is true. So, okay, let leave aside uh, that. We'll go back to what I was saying a second ago. Okay, hold on. Wait, your if argument. Assume- hold on. Your argument for genocide is dog shit. What is the next thing you want to talk about? This, I'm not going to embarrass myself. You-, you can no, no. You can make the argument somewhere else, but th- it's equally stupid on their side when they say thirty thousand dead. It must be genocide, and it's equally stupid on the other side when you say only thirty thousand. It can't be genocide. This has nothing to do with genocide. I don't care about this part of the argument. It doesn't have to do with the capability of somebody to kill. That's nothing to do with it. It's not, it's not relevant at all to you genocide. Missed, I don't were- want to. I don't want to be on this argument ground arguing because I've already seeded the 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 whole purpose of what genocide is. The dolo specialis of genocide is the special intent to kill an entire with you. okay then hold on then you saying that they've got the capacity to kill a ton of people but they haven't is not an argument in any capacity what way whatsoever i'm never making this no, argument publicly it, i'm gonna no. be an idiot that's a foolish argument if you want to make it go make it for a second state my <sighs> argument again because you misconstrued it okay i said if we assume for the sake of argument israel's intent was genocide yeah and let's say norma finkelstein saying israel has committed genocide not in the future will commit genocide but has committed genocide or plausibly has committed genocide that means it already happened 
that they had the intent and they, they carried it out. Just having an intent in your mind and not doing anything about it is not genocide, by the way. Um, what if they what if they said so if we they want to kill intent, as many Palestinians as possible? We think we can probably and only... then they sat on their hands and killed no and then, one. And then they be think, genocide. well, they haven't killed no one. They've killed almost thirty thousand people. Right? What if they said this is probably the I'm biggest saying, number of people we can get away with? We can try to starve out the rest. We'll see what happens when we move them south. If those logs were to be released, if that, if those channels or cables or whatever, if that got released, would you say like, oh, well, that kind of looks like genocide? Well, if if they starved them out in a future date, then that wouldn't be genocide. Now that would, that would be an argument for genocide at some point in the future, but not an argument for plausible genocide at this moment in time. Okay, no. so if you're committing, future, if so if happened, you're committing if you're genocide happened, by, yeah. so if you're starving a whole group of people, it doesn't count as committing genocide until they actually starve. I them. just said it would, but it didn't happen yet. Well, aren't there? Aren't they in like an ICE PC five famine, whatever the f- in South Gaza? No, they're not an ice PC five. There's there's hundreds of trucks a day going into Gaza, and these numbers they pull out were eighty percent of the world's. Uh, there's hundreds of trucks in going Gaza. into Gaza. You didn't you use the word non sequitur earlier? How does that address the the UN rating of the? Because there's um, hundreds of trucks of food going into Gaza, and Israel's put zero limitations on the number of food going into Gaza. Israel hasn't fought at all on the humanitarian aid that goes into the Gaza Strip. Additional inspection? No, not on food. On oil, yes. On food and water? No, absolutely not. There's been no... The only holdup has been on the other side, which can't process it, but not on Israel then. Israel's put no limitations on the number of calories like they like to use entering Gaza. They put limitations on oil going in. And I want to just wrap up what I was saying with the genocide thing. If if Israel was intent on committing genocide and they committed the genocide like Norman's claiming, not at some future date, but has already done it, then you would you would see that in the results. You wouldn't see um, 20 to 30,000 people dead in an urban area, which is analogous to any other urban conflict. You would see it in the results because if they were trying to wipe them out, it could very well wipe them out a long time ago. Okay. That's how you know that they weren't trying to do it. Gotcha. Okay. What's so the next you argument you have? If you assume for the sake of argument they were trying to do it, as in their intent was to do it, uh-huh. then it would have been done. That's what I'm saying. I think that's pretty rational. Okay. All right. What's your next thing? And uh, I think a final point I want to bring up is um, you you a lot of times make the claim that religion has almost nothing to do with this. I think is extremely wrong-headed. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, if you take just the Arab world in general, you know why these uh, countries, like the dictators of these countries, might want normalizations, but the people don't. You think it's what do you what do you think the reason behind that is? You think it's just they're worried about um, some people being killed? Like they have normalization of other countries. They brought Assad back into the Arab League, so it can't be that, right? So what is the other? What is the other? What is the other uh, variable can, why not in this just equation? Tell me instead of playing twenty questions. No, what's the what's the other variable in the equation other than the number of deaths? Uh, they're all brown. They all no, wear the a, same a funny conflict. hats. I, I don't know. You tell me. Why do you think? Why do you think the name of this operation is called Al Aqsa Flood? You think they were just spitballing it because mm-hmm. they wanted to galvanize the Arab world? Mm-hmm. How's that been so working for they, them? Na- not good, but that was the attempt. Why do you think it was named Al Aqsa Flood? Why do you think every couple of weeks or every couple of years they they say mm-hmm. Al Aqsa is under attack? Well, if Hamas has been trying to galvanize, if, 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 if Hamas has been trying to galvanize the the Muslim world to do jihad against Israel, and nobody's helping them except for Iran and their crazy fucking lunatic fringe groups, seems like the religious aspect isn't really suiting them very well. I just said the people. I said the dictators, like for example, the Sisi, the dictator. I don't think he's religious or not, and he has a he has a hold over Egypt. But let's say hypothetically, like you like to use the hypotheticals, mm-hmm. if Egypt was a representative democracy, mm-hmm. Egypt would have been under Israel on October eighth. As in, if they followed the will of their people, just same with Jordan. If they followed the will of their people, they've been at, we would have been at war with Israel on October eighth. The good thing there, don't. Okay. Same with Saudi Arabia. Same with all these countries that have uh, dictatorships in charge. The people in charge might not be that religious, but the populations are, and that's that's the very reason why they cannot normalize relations with Israel. It's for extremely religious reasons. If you look at any Arab uh, media, it's it's it, 
drenched in uh, religious content. Mm -hmm. This is not like some some you know footnote to the conflict. This is the very thing. That's why I was saying every couple of years there's this whole there's this whole hysteria about Al Aqsa under attack, despite the fact that the only people discriminated at Al Aqsa are Jews and Christians. That's another thing that never gets reported that Jews and Christians literally are, are discriminated on the Temple Mount, despite it being a lot more important to them than it is to Islam. Um, and I mean, Hamas, which in this, if we were looking at this conflict itself, Hamas is, is through and through a religious organization. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if the PA leadership itself is, but if you go at the population level, they definitely are. Okay. Um, and they're highly motivated for religious reasons. I mean, as they're killing everyone, you hear, what are, what are they screaming as they're killing people? Uh, for pan-Arab secularism, I thought. Well, that's what you would think if you said there was no religion involved, right? Uh-huh. They would, they would be screaming uh, free, free Palestine while they're killing people, right? Yep. Okay, what's your, do you have a And the occupation. Point? Do you have another point or anything? Yeah, I have another point. Uh -huh. um, I think you might have uh, made this point before, but just if you haven't, I want to like let you know mm -hmm. that when almost exclude when uh, Palestinians, either in the West Bank or Gaza, use the term occupation, they mean a hundred percent of Israel. They don't mean uh, settlements in the West Bank. They don't mean checkpoints in the West Bank. They mean Tel Aviv. They mean Haifa. They mean Beersheba. They mean a hundred percent of Israel. Mm -hmm. There's a very good channel who who goes to he randomly um, asks questions of Israelis and Palestinians, and almost to the last Palestinian, if you ask them um, if every single Jew packed up and you had 100 percent of the West Bank and you know the 67 lines, they would say no, we're going to continue fighting. So, so in the West, they might think that occupation is referring to that, but the Palestinians certainly don't think so. Okay. So you can you can uproot every single last Jew in the West Bank and give the strategic highlands over Israel's population centers to the Palestinians. That wouldn't change a thing, because for them occupation is not one to one with uh, West Bank checkpoints or West Bank settlements. It's one to one with any single part of Israel. Um, I think. Do you know? Did you know that, or do you know that? You might have. Might not be something I'm arguing with you over. Uh, wait, for which part in particular? Eliminator, thanks for the five hundred subs. When oh yeah, that's not, I don't think it's with. I don't think every Palestinian means that, but there are a lot of people that when they talk about the occupation, they talk about all of Israel. Yes. Okay. Um, you won't have everyone in anything, but I'm saying the vast. I don't majority. know what the person. I don't know if it's the vast majority. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know where I would find that information from. But it I, is true. You can find that information in polling data. You can find that information from from random um, street interviews, where you get that exclusive answer, basically, except for one or two. Okay. You can find that information however you want to go about, however you would go about um, testing people's, uh, what they believe. Mm -hmm. it, it all, it all um, backs what I'm saying now. And, yeah, so that's another point I would make. And I would really recommend that you're for your debate with Finkelstein, you should not accept the premise of taking... Uh, any of these human rights organizations or UN orgs as gospel truth that you should, I mean, I would say, why should I trust any of these organizations given the fact that these people, for example, uh, the UN has more resolutions on Israel than all the countries in the world combined every single year without exception. Um, Amnesty publishes more reports in Israel than all other Arab countries in the world combined. I mean, you could go through these organizations. Human Rights Watch, which is paid by Qatar, if you look at who their chief is, just read through their tweets before and after October 7th. It's just exclusively on Israel. Same with Amnesty. If you look at the Secretary General of Amnesty International, that means she's allegedly the Secretary General of an organization that's cares for human rights internationally. Mm -hmm. Just go through her Twitter feed before or after October 7th. 95 percent plus will be on Israel and if that if that's not good reason a priori to just say I why should I trust this org as being an impartial body looking at things then what else could be if you had that in any other situation would you would you 
find it necessary to take them seriously or at face value. I mean, I think you still have to deal with the content that they publish, yeah, but... Well, if their content or what they're publishing is for the very purpose of continue to publish reports to demonize Israel, then they can find whatever they want. They can selectively uh, pick stuff. They can selectively leave stuff out. And you can do that with any country if you actually want to. And that's sure. what they do with Israel. Okay. So I think it's a fool's errand to try to argue the actual merits of each and every uh, amnesty or human rights watch report. I think that would be a bad way to debate. It would be a losing a losing cause. In my opinion, and if you don't believe me about the the incredible um, obsession with Israel, just just go look at the Secretary General of Amnesty or Human Rights Watch Twitter feed. It's just a quick way to just see where where their minds at, mm -hmm. and you'll see that ninety five percent before and after October seventh is devoted to a tiny country with eight million people, and then you go if you go to any human right human uh, UN org. Or the UN General Assembly, or the Human Rights Council, which is more than a joke. You'll see that you would, if if you were, if you came down and you just looked at the reports of the UN, you would think Israel has contains half the world's population at least, okay. given the amount of attention that's brought on it, and is responsible for like ninety percent of the world's deaths. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Okay, sure. So with that, I think um, unless you have something to disagree with. I just wanted to bring that up before your debate. Gotcha. Anything else? Do you have anything to disagree with about? Um, no, I think I'm good. I love you. So you, do, you don't disagree that's a religious dispute? Or you do? Uh, I've said a trillion times that I think religion has become an important factor post-2020. I think you guys just ignore that whenever I say that. I don't know why, but... Okay, you think the Arab world was galvanized for secular reasons in 67, 73? Yes, and for nationalistic reasons. Israel is I think secular for reasons? Nationalistic reasons, yes. One billion percent, yes. Nationalistic reasons? Yeah. What, 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 what would be the nationalistic reasons for obsessing over Israel over any other dispute in the Middle East that's going on? Uh, because the goal for pan-Arabism was strong because you saw them competing to create like unified Arab states and because the main pushback against Israel was because all the leaders saw it as a spearhead of, I think, European colonial uh, projection. The Saudis also into... oppose pan-Arabism. You don't, you don't get the Arab world galvanized over the Saudis. But you don't get the Arab world galvanized over the Saudis. What do you Nassar mean Nasser didn't galvanize the Arab world over the Saudis. They were against uh, wait, the pan Arabism. What do you mean he didn't galvanize the world over the Saudis? What do you mean by that? In the way that he galvanized the Arab world against Israel. I completely disagree. Didn't Nasser arguably lose the Six Day War because he committed some 50,000 troops to fighting against Saudi interests in Yemen? Oh, that's not, that's not, I'm not, we're arguing different things. I'm not saying Nasser didn't, uh, for ge geopolitical reasons, uh, uh, fight with uh, the Saudis or he didn't. I don't know. Whether he did or didn't, I saying the Arab world, the population, didn't go into the streets against Saudi Arabia. They went into the streets against Israel for one particular reason, not because of pan Arabism. I don't think they. I don't even know how much they necessarily went into the streets against Israel. I mean, I think that they were mad against Israel for being there, but I think that it was mainly there was the, huge. There was there was the, the entire Egyptian streets were flooded before and after. Before and after what? The sixty seven war. Why? When Nasser, when yeah, no Nasser, shit. They the lost the entire fucking Sinai Peninsula to them. What do you mean? Yeah. No, no. Before the war, before the war, there was used galvanization uh, against Israel. There was like this. this sure, but even I mean, even this, even before the war, yeah. I mean, of course, because the presence of Israel here is like a whole new, like supposed European project that has shown up on your doorstep that people had huge problems with. That the Arabs in that area had huge problems with. Yeah. I don't think you need. No, the Arabs weren't referring to them as Europeans. They were referring to them as Yahud. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure that the obsession was definitely them coming in as Europeans. Yes, that was the mythos of those Jews that had come in. It was as Europeans, and it was with European support. Do you know? What, do you know what the? Okay. Do you know what the best-selling books in the Arab world are after the Quran? I don't even care. I don't even want to hear them. What what is the evidence of the countries that were uniting against the Israeli people at the time between forty eight and sixty seven? Where is the evidence of 
like re- religiously inspired conflict? It was religiously it was religious fervor at the population level. Maybe at the maybe at the elite level it wasn't, but they used the religious fervor either. If, they, if there was so much, if there was them. so much religious fervor, why would, wouldn't it have been easier for these Arab states to combine to expel uh, Israel from the region? They couldn't. They lost the war. Well, yeah, but a lot of that was due to lack of coordination and lack of unification among the states. First of all, Jordan signed over their their army to the, to Egypt before the war. That's literally as unified as you can get. Why would you use Jordan as an example here when... Because um, that was one of the three main fighters in the Six-Day War. Who, the King Hussein was literally assassinated by Palestinians for like being too friendly towards Israel in 51. And, and, and Jordan I'm literally... i 67 war. Sure, going up war. through 67 and, and like through all of this, like I'm pretty sure the Jordanian kings were like had the most friendly disposition towards the Israeli prime ministers. Again, I told you at the elite level, it might they might not be motivated by religion. I said at the population level, hence why he was assassinated. Okay, um, I, I I guess in, in all of my studying and all of my history and all of my reading on this, I, the religious stuff just doesn't come up anywhere near as much as the nationalistic stuff does. The religious stuff doesn't because seem to take the a huge, people that are writing it. Uh huh. Oh, it's all the elites always writing have it, to but find not another the un- people, underlining reason for it. Why? But the people that write about Hamas don't look for an underlying reason for Hamas. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. They they barely mention the religious aspects the, of the Islamic they're jihadist party. That, their blockade, okay. this or that. Right. Economic we're just reading. Reason. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we just have different people. Then I don't know. Um, it seems to be pretty easy to find evidence or writing that for Hamas, a lot of it is like religiously inspired, um, or at the very least, that's like a huge tool that they use uh, to, to drive their population to fight against Israel. That um, The very fact that they're able to use that tool shows you how religiously motivated the conflict is. If it wasn't, if it wasn't a but that was a cha- that was a change, but that was it. a change in character. That was a like that was a it wasn't a change in character. Okay. Um, you think that a, you think that a theocratic Islamist regime is the same in character as a secular dictatorship of an Arab state, where the people are no, because Muslims? a secular dictatorship keeps the lid on. Because the what? Because a secular dictatorship will keep the lid on the population, like what's happening in Egypt and Jordan. So you think the religious fervor of like an average uh, person living under Hamas is going to be similar to the religious fervor of of um, a Muslim living in Egypt? Egyptian, yes. Okay. Yes, you know Egypt is the number one um, publisher of anti-Semitic content in the world. Gotcha. Um, you know why? You know why Israel's peace treaty is nothing but like an armistice treaty? Why the the peace is just a cold treaty? Why do you think that is? Israel gave back every last inch of Egyptian land. I'm pretty sure it was because why, when why, Sadat why was can't... negotiating for these treaties, I don't know if any of the neighboring Arab states saw themselves as having a warm peace with Israel and a cold peace with something Israel. No, was but why were the them? Egyptians themselves? And why was he assassinated? Why? He was assassinated because he was a sellout to the West. Um, and why no, did... he was assassinated by the mother. He was assassinated for being a sellout to the Jews for for negotiating. If you with go the through Jews. the his trial and his statements at the trial, I don't believe he mentions Jews or Israel a single time. I think it was because they considered. I didn't Sadat... say Sadat. I said the reason he was assassinated. Yes, not I'm saying himself. the assassin said... of Sadat, the guy that assassinated him. That when you go through the trials and you read it, nothing about Judaism or Jewish people or Israel is ever brought up. It was because the guy was obsessed with Sadat was a Western sellout because it, uh, Egypt ended up taking a lot of money Western from the United States. Sellout or sellout to the Jews. What did I, didn't I just say like 20 times sell it to the West? Because that was one of, uh, it was a big change in Egyptian uh, posture to turn from the Soviet Union and start taking money from America to make peace with Israel. Okay, so so why, okay, let's, let's, let's use a modern example. Why, can't, why, would it, why would it be dangerous for Saudi Arabia to normalize with Israel? Well, I don't even know if, I'm not even sure how dangerous the it Saudi would be. The Saudi monarchy, why would it be a little dangerous for them to normalize with Israel? Probably because the people don't like uh, Israeli people, be my guess, don't like Israel. So it's not Western because they have good relations with the West. So Wait, it's not hold on. Western. Asking why the people of Saudi Arabia aren't okay with normalization with Saudi Arabia is a fundamentally different question than why was Sadat assassinated or what did his assassin say in trial? These are two different questions. I'm pretty sure the assassin was a religious Muslim Brotherhood man. I, I don't know this off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure I read that. Um, we, you can check right now on Wikipedia or something, but I think he was affiliated with the Muslim Brotherhood, which is like, which is what Hamas came from, which is explicitly religious movement. Okay, how was you? How was the UAE or Bahrain or Sudan or Jordan? How are these people able to normalize relations with Israel? 
if the people okay, would that's a great example. Uh, Jordan is another example of a cold peace where the population itself despises Israel, but Jordan, the because they don't have, they're not a representative of the people. They made a cold peace treaty with Israel. And you think that the you think that if same with Egypt. Do you think that if Israel, if it would have been a bunch of Christian people coming in, do you think it would have been the same conflict? It, it might have been probably not to not to the same uh, ferocity because the Jews are like on a higher pedestal than Christians when it comes to hate, but it would still be a religious conflict, I would assume. I don't know for sure. I mean, we do have the Crusades back in the day as an example. So, with Christians, it would probably be about the same conflict, right? It would be, if it was, I would I would assume it would be religiously motivated also, but not to the extent it is with the Jews, which is like um, taken to a whole, to the power of 10. If it was a group of Muslims that came in that was a different flavor of Muslims, We'll call them the Abuki Muslims. If they came in and they were there, all, no one would give a shit. No one would give a shit. Really, nobody would give a shit if a bunch of European white Abuki Muslims came in to the mandatory Palestinian There's no period. No such thing as those. No shit. I'm, that's why I said it was a hypothetical. Nobody would care if they came in. How do you describe? No, the, if they're Muslims, I don't think I don't think you would have one one hundredth of the care. Absolutely not. That's why no one gives a shit. No, there's no protest over a million dead in Yemen and Syria. No one gives a shit. What do you mean? People, why, why, of why, course, people wait, why do you keep saying nobody gives a shit when Egypt committed so many troops to fighting in Yemen to when Yemenese people are killing themselves divided on religious and sectarian lines again, over different again, flavors of Islam? Up, you keep mixing up the, the leadership of dictators with the populations. Why in the West do you have Muslims every single day for the last five months marching over the deaths of Let's say, let's assume 30,000. You never had a single march of this scale, even for one day, for a million deaths of fellow Muslims. In Separated out day, from them. Other Middle East what, because, it's a, because they view it as a European settler project that showed up on their lands. And they're living in Europe? That makes a lot of sense. That their problem is a European settler project? It's because they're, they're not using, living they're in Europe. They're living in the Middle East. To describe Muslims. Hold on. What are you talking about? Do you, the, the, Maybe if you're a leftist and you're and, the, and you're and hold you're on, hold that, on. That's Where did most of the Jews before forty eight come from for Israel? They came from Europe. What was the impression of who was sponsoring them? The British. Who did Egypt fight okay, against okay. in this in the Suez Crisis? Who did Israel align themselves with? The French and the British. Like, what do you that's, mean? That's irrelevant. Okay. Okay. So why? why that's, that's, that's irrelevant, all right? In 2023 or before that, or whatever conflict you want to go to, you would have to explain, okay, why are Muslims in the West, you think Muslims in the West are on the streets for the last five months because they think Israel is a, is a Western outpost, a secular colonial? That's what's motivating them, really? As of right now, I'm not sure, but in the beginning, yeah, absolutely, yes. It was a Western outpost, that's what was motivating them? Yes, I think so. And your evidence for that as well? Uh, I mean, my evidence for that is that the, like, pretty sure every surrounding Arab leader saw them as a Western, uh, like, implantation because the British people were the ones sponsoring them coming in. I said, in, I said today, 2023, the Arabs. I'm not, why you, hold on. Did you not listen to what I said? What I said was at the time when they You're came in. You're talking about in 48, what they saw. Yeah, them in as. 48 and pre-48, yes, that they were, it was a British-sponsored implantation of European people into that region. And then from there, once you start the violence and then you, once you wind the clock up and then you go, well, I mean, then yeah, like, why they continue? It's not like they're going to stop fighting at some point. Um, I think over the past 20 years, I've said this a million times, over the past 20, 25 years, I think the conflict has taken on a more religious character as nations have removed themselves from the conflict via peace treaties. And now all you have are like a super jihadist radicalized people. But prior to like 2000, especially around like 48, 67, yeah, I think it was primarily characterized by them hating the fact that Europeans were settling their Arab land. Yes. And... Uh First, okay, first, okay. If you want to hop back to forty eight, sixty seven, we could. I asked you a question about two thousand twenty three. Why? What do you think is motivating the Arabs to go out on the streets every day for the last five months? And you hop back to. I don't even know how much. I don't know how much Arabs are going onto the streets to protest. Fucking. I don't know how much even the average citizen. Have you cares. seen the footage from London? Literally every day. Uh, the, uh, the Arabs in London are different than Arabs in. I don't even know if the Arabs in Muslims. London. Muslims. Yeah, I don't know if. Yeah, they're they're Muslims. I don't even know what I would consider them Arabs. 
Um, they're there for Muslims in Dearborn. Sure, they might. Yeah, they're there for retarded fucking reasons. Half of those Muslims probably don't even can't even find the fucking Jordan River on a map or don't know what the West Bank is of what they probably don't know. Yeah, that, but that's what they do know is different. that. It's Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Uh, if you're gonna ask me about like what Muslims in London think or what Muslims in fucking Michigan think, that's a fundamentally different question than Muslims in the Middle East. That's a di- those are these are to- totally different groups of people. I asked you that to me in the beginning. I said, why do you think they're protesting for the last five months? I was referring to them for the whole world. I don't. Oh, for I don't know. Probably for the same reason white nineteen-year-old liberals on college campuses do. They might be protesting because it's a Western outpost. That you might be right about. But I don't think Muslims are uh, are conditioned on secular colonialism. Those are those are. Those you are think that they're? You think that they're academia? You think? Hold on. So you think that when in when Jews were coming in from Europe, you don't think the fact they were coming in from Europe, you don't think that was a big deal to the. Muslims at the time, that would have just been an academic buzzword to them. They were just upset about the religious differences, uh, differences between them. I mean, I mean, the British came in and there weren't, there weren't, there weren't uproar about it. What do you mean the British came in and there weren't uproar about it? I just it? gave you a knockdown argument. Because, you said it was hold on. Wait, 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 wait. The you didn't give in. me a, the British didn't come in. The British came in with a mandate. Yes, to, they did. No, no. The British came in with a mandate to give them the territory. They didn't come in to rule it forever. The British... Okay, that's very nice. But they came in from 17 to 48. They governed the place. They ruled it with a very strict arm. To, yeah, with the intention of, for, number one, it was to turn it over eventually. Number two, it wasn't always peaceful between the Arabs and the British. They literally rose up and tried to fight the British from 60 or from 36 to 39. They got fucking crushed by the British. So I don't know why you would use that as a knockdown argument. But and first, that's first of all, um, when the British came in, did you have the uproar in the Arab world when the British came in in 1917? No, because the, the I, because the understanding was that no, because the understanding was that the British people were going to give them the territory. Why would they have an uproar against them? They're happy about it until Jews start getting shipped in from Europe. Why would they be happy with Europeans coming in? Because they're going to give them the territory and Isn't leave. The whole argument that they're hmm? because they're going to give them the territory and leave. So you're going to give them the territory and leave. When do they? When do they have that assumption? Uh, when, about ma- when the ma- okay, when the whole mandate period is made, the whole point of the mandate period and the whole separating all the land and Sykes Picot and all the League of Nations mandate stuff was to basically create mandates for these areas and eventually transfer the territories or states. Do you think the average Arab at that time knew any of these things? Do you think they were educated on this stuff? Yeah, I think they probably had an understanding that the Brits are going to give us land. Yes, I think that maybe was the, the elites did, but you think the average Arab knew about Sykes Picot and what's happening here or there? They probably just knew that they were going to get their own country. Yeah, because the Ottoman Empire was gone. That'd be my guess. Yeah. Um. So then, what's your argument for why would they would reject it, despite the fact that mandatory Palestine, which was originally included Jordan? They were getting three, four, the vast majority of that land, and they rejected it. What would be the cause of that? If Wait, it was what do you just mean rejected? What do you land? mean they rejected it? What are you talking about? I'm saying they they didn't want a, a Jew on any part of the land having sovereignty. I don't know if they cared about having a Jew on any part of the land. I think what they cared about were the massive influx of Jewish people coming in from Europe to the land. I think that was the issue. There were already Jews in Palestine prior to the Brits getting there. It was a massive influx of a lot of people into that land between um, no. 1917 and 1948, including Arabs. There were like Arabs. Yeah, of course. Arabs don't mind when Arabs are going into the land because they thought it was Arab land. They did mind when a bunch of Europeans were coming into the land. They minded when Europeans came into the land, not because they were Jewish? What? No, they... What do you... What? They cared when Europeans were coming into the land when they were going to stay there and create a new state of Europeans. Okay, so, so when after 48, Israel Israel was no longer majority European, then their hatred still remained for what reason? Because now they've got a state here that they never wanted. Do you think it morphs into a religious conflict? I'm not just talking point? about the Palestinian. I'm talking about the entire Arab world. Yeah, now they've got a whole ass fucking European fucking state in the middle of what was but supposed to be. it's not a be. European state anymore. That's not how they view it. It's only there because it was sponsored by the British, because they made a promise to Jews to allow them to set up a state in an area that the Arabs thought was going to be reserved for themselves. Every single, every single one of those territories was, was, was given by some European power. Jordan was chopped up by European power. Syria and given was to by Arabs. Power. And given to Arabs. And power. given to Arabs. Given to Arab royal families or given to Arab monarchies or appointed Arab families. Okay, so yes. why, why would they be upset if, if, if Europeans did that with Jews too? What, what, what would be all Because they weren't about? Arabs, because they were Europeans. 
because they were Europeans, so they cared. Um, it, people in Iraq cared that Europeans were living somewhere else. Uh, even though in most, the Middle half, East, more than half the country isn't European. I think in, in Iraq, they probably didn't care as much because they're not as close to it. But I think the people in Jordan cared. I think the people in Syria cared. I think the people in Egypt cared. Yeah. Even though it wasn't majority European anymore after 48? I, I don't know how to communicate with you if you think that people are going to switch their brains to thinking this was a European like colonial project up till 48, and then as soon as they declared independence, a switch flipped, and it suddenly wasn't because of other immigration. That's not how human beings work. I don't know hey, why you would think all right, that. We don't have to use a switch flip over the last 75 years. It doesn't because matter. It doesn't the start of the project, the start of the project felt like a European settler colonial project to them. Yes. The PLO literally fancied themselves after the, was it the FLN in Algeria that kicked out the French? Yes, that's how they viewed the, the Jews as people that were coming in from Europe to settle the land as a European project, as a European state. Okay, and so that's why they, so religion is very minimal on this since mostly they just hated Europeans, yeah? Is that is that your argument? Yeah, I think it was a group of European Arabs that came in that were all, you know, European Arabs and white and wanted to set up their own Arabic Muslim fucking state, but it was like a different flavor of Muslim, but they didn't want to do the other people. I think they'd probably have the same problems, yes. Just how, like, like how Arabs or Muslims fight other Muslims in fucking Yemen, just like how Muslims have fought other Muslims in fucking Syria, just how Muslims have fought other no, Muslims. No, my argument isn't that there wouldn't be conflict between rival Arabs. My argument wouldn't be, would be that you wouldn't have a coalescence of the entire Muslim and Arab world against this. You didn't really get a coalescence. They all were shit slinging at each other to go to each other into the conflict. There wasn't a coalescence at all. There was constant competition between all of them for like Again. Arab superiority. Again, there's a reason why um, the Arabs use Israel. The Arab, first of all, the Arab dictatorships. I already granted you 50 times that they might. They were not motivated by religion, but the population was. That's why they used Israel as a scapegoat anytime an issue came up for their own domestic consumption. Sure. Yeah, yeah and I think it probably riled the population up a little bit. But I don't know, like if 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 it was white, if it was white, if it was white Muslims there, you think they would have they would be able to uh, rally up their their populations, rouse the populations up? Probably like wasn't the uh, wasn't the Iran Iraq war like oh, so one the, of the so bloodiest the, conflicts in the entirety of the fucking Middle East? Like how many people died in that? Like ten times more than well, have died uh, in the entire fucking conflict? Israel in the in the Iran Iraq war. Like like ten times as many people died in that in the entire Israeli uh, Palestinian conflict. How many I people died in I, Syria I, I, in that civil war? People died in and Yemen yeah, in that the, civil war. Like, I mean, Arabs are fighting, and, and Muslims yeah, are fighting. Other Muslims, and Arabs, yeah, all the, the fucking Muslim time. World, the Muslim world didn't protest for five months and gave zero shits. Who cares about protests? Yeah, they pay lip service to it, but I don't think it actually motivates the Arab but population. Our is what is motivating the the Arab and Muslim world? Yeah. So when I'm looking for a motive, it's not religion. When I yeah, I don't. If it was if it was just religion, or if religion was like a strong motivator here, then I think you would see different actions. I think you would have seen a more unified uh, expulsion of Jewish people from uh, from the from um, from Israel I, when they came in. It would have been like, hey guys, like let's get together. We're all Muslims. We've got to kick these Jews out. But it wasn't. It was like, hey, we're uh, all a bunch tried of. They that eventually. No, they didn't really. No. I uh, know. So the forty-eight war was them not trying to do that. No, Jordan literally stopped in the fucking West Bank, uh, didn't move any further. Um, Syria and Egypt took the land that they could, and then everybody kind of like annexed their own shit and they fucking chilled. That was let not a, ask, that was not a, like a cohesive a army from like five or seven Arab states that were all working together under one unified command to expel the Jews. No, Just because they sucked at it didn't mean they tried, didn't try to do it. No, but why did they suck at it? They sucked at it because they weren't a cohesive Islamic people. They were a bunch of like Arabs competing with each other with nationalistic fervors all of their own. No, they were they were they they might have not been cohesive as a military unit, but they were certainly cohesive in their motivation as, at the population level and at the soldier level. Absolutely. What do you think? What do you think the design of the flag was? Uh, that was the army invading. I don't know. Did the Arab all, Liberation did, Army? What was the flag? I don't know. Was Arab it an anti-European flag? Liberation Army flag. No, it was it was a flag of the Star of David with a sword through it. This was for in 1952. No, the 48 War. That's what they had the flag of. Well, show me, link me. That's that's what the Arab armies came in with. That was all the of them, all the surrounding Arab armies came is, in with the same flag. Is that a European flag? symbol? In the 1948 War, all of them came in with the same with the same flag. That was their official flag of their. You keep saying the same thing over and over again. What can I look up for? Um, yeah, to find this. 
You could type in the 1948 war on Wikipedia and you'll probably see that emblem. 1948 war, Wikipedia. This is what was marked on their tanks. If they show the flags, I don't know. Yeah, right, go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, go up, up, up. Back to the beginning. Yeah, up. No, go back to the beginning. There's a delay on the stream. Back to the, be the top of the page. Top of the page. Right there, right there, right there. Under belligerence, under belligerence. On the right side, on the right side, under belligerence. Right there, under belligerence. What's that, a flag? Under irregulars? A little, little, little under that. I can't see it because your screen is blocking the it. The Arab Liberation Army, also translated as Arab Salvation Army, oh. was an army of volunteers from Arab countries led by what? Fazi al Kowaki. It fought on the Arab side of the 1948 Palestine War. It was set up by the Arab League. How many people marched for this? The target recruitment the was 10,000. The, the number of volunteers of having joined the army was around 6,000. The actual number deployed might have been as low as 3,500. That's the emblem they marched under. One group. No, all the groups. If you look at their tanks, that's what they had prank, pr uh, painted on it. Okay, if you can show me that, I'd be curious to see it. And if I did, you would say you would change your position, or you just no. I'm not going to change my uh, whole position with one piece of evidence, but it would be a good piece of evidence in your favor. Yeah, or it would at least be a piece of evidence that they were more unified in in '48 than my assumption was, because my assumption of '48 was that these countries didn't have good unification, um, that they were incredibly uh, haphazard in their Again, approach to war here. Military, military uh, competence with 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 their motivation. Not just no, no. That. I'm not mixing it up. I'm showing that like <laughs> if they had a unified Muslim identity that they wanted to like that they felt strongly about that they wanted to use to expel. They had a unified anti-Jewish identity. Yes. I think they okay. How can you prove one way? They between, didn't want how, the Yahoo to you have prove, any part how of can, even. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're just never gonna go on this. Okay. If, if all the, the pro, here's the problem is that if a bunch of people came in and all of them were six feet tall, you would say that they were fighting them because they were all six feet tall. If all of them came in because they were Christian, you'd say they were fighting them because they're Christian. If all of them came in and they had 12 inch dicks, you'd say it was because they had too big of a dick. But the problem is that they came well, in if, as if, Europeans. If, they were also Jewish, yeah. Media. And I'm sure that they're, I'm sure that like part of the conflict, especially over time, has taken on an anti Jewish character, but it's because they were Europeans. If they would have been Christians, I think they would have been the same fucking war. If it would have been a different Muslim flavor, then it would have been a, 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 a holy war against fucking another of Muslim, just like Iran and Iraq fighting well, against each other, just like the fucking Yemeni families fighting against each other, just like the whole Iran Saudi Arabian conflict against each other. The idea that the Muslims are super okay. unified in any part of the world against any other ally, yeah, they all pay lip service to hating Israel, but at the end of the day, I don't think that that religious unification is there. Even you can say amongst Again, the noble citizens keep, it is, but is keep, it? You keep, you keep, you keep uh, mixing up what I know, the elites, the, are, yeah, the elites and the people, level. but then you don't have anything to show me, like, where is the society level? Where is the societal unification that is so hell bent on getting rid of the Jews that they're you like, can see it today, you could see it today, really? And with, with more normalization towards Israel than at any other point in history between Muslim majority countries today yeah. is when you see yeah. it. I'm okay. A, okay. Have you seen, you seen these demonstrations in Yemen? I don't care, bro. Yo, you, you, know got it, you, need, bro you need something more than a YouTube video of a demonstration. Okay, what's on the Yemeni's flag? Okay. What's on the Houthi um, flag? I, you're not you're not proving your point. Like you want you want to talk the about Houthi the Houthi flag? flag? You want to talk about the Yemeni flag, bro? Who spent who's who's laid more bodies in Yemen? Who's buried more bodies? Saudi-led coalitions? The Saudis. Yeah, or Egypt with Nasser or fucking Jews? Does it say death to Saudis? No, what it says death to America. Death to America and death to Jews. And what does it say after that? Yeah, and death to what Jews? It says, it says, death to America, death to Israel, curse upon the Jews. Okay, yeah. What's your point? I'm saying if they could rally millions of people in the rallies all holding that flag, what does that tell you? I don't know. Who did they spend all their the time fighting? The are starving. Who, who did they spend all their time fighting? Why are they motivated by some conflict uh, far away that, has no, that doesn't involve them? Why do you think they're motivated by the conflict? For religious reasons. Really? You don't think it's because Iran provides them weapons and training? You don't think it's because they fly people to train with, with Hezbollah? 
You don't think that the fact that that's Iran is shipping that, weapons... That, that's what would motivate the leadership, maybe. That's not what's motivating the You're so fucking to, retarded. To yeah, you can keep pulling that same fucking line over and over again. The reality is nobody in Yemen... Nobody... Up? I'm sorry, hold on. No ordinary citizen in Yemen gives a fuck about Israel. What they care about is the fact that they're getting shit from Iran, and Iran wants them to participate in that conflict. You think that the 60,000 people okay. a year okay. or whatever from 20... Oh. From, from 2050 to 2010 that were starving to death give a fuck about what's happening in fucking Israel? The 30, 40 million people in Yemen are super bought in to the conflict in fucking Israel? Israel? No, they don't care on the on the geopolitical level one way or the other about the Palestinians, but they care on the on the level that they, they despise the Jews, which is really. Uh, How, where do I see that at? Where do say. I where do I see that at? Go look at the slogans. The slogans. March. I'm sorry. Do the normal people decide the slogans, or do the elites decide the slogans? Who makes the flags? Who's holding up the flags? Who's ki who's killing uh, the Jews in Yemen? All right, I'll, I'll give you one better because you don't. If, if, if writing explicitly curse upon the Jews is not good enough for you, I'll, I'll give you one better. Uh, if you watch any every, any Arab media, you'll find ninety percent of it is not. Oh, this, these very bad Western implants are here. It's these Zionist Jews are here. These Jews, which are defiling Islam, are here. That's why it's called Al Aqsa flood. That's why they motivate the entire Arab world with Al Aqsa, which is a religious symbol. It's nothing to do with oh. If it was Western, I understand. Are, yes, I understand. I understand, that, I understand that there are religious extremists that try to use these slogans to rally the people, but it doesn't work. Why they would don't it really rally care the that it, it does. Work? It doesn't rally the people. It doesn't work. That's why nobody is it really attacking the people. Really, no. it doesn't rally the people. Correct. How many millions of people came out to protest for the last bro, five months? So, okay, you win. You win, bro. The protests. You got it, man. The protests. The protests, yeah. It's because they physically can't fight them, but the they, they would. No, it's because they don't give a fuck. I'm sorry, but showing up to protests and protesting for two days right, doesn't you, mean that you give a fuck. Right no, now. correct. That means you don't give a fuck. You don't care, okay? If Egypt, if Egypt, if Egypt was was a representative democracy that followed the will of the people, would they would they be not get, doing anything right now? I have, I don't know. I'm not sure. Do you think that if you're a well, dictatorship, you do, you th do you think if you're a dictatorship, do you think that means you have no obligation whatsoever to the will of the people? You think it totally doesn't matter? You don't think coups exist? It means. It means. It means it matters. Didn't Egypt's uh, didn't left. Egypt's current leadership can it trace itself back to coups and throwing over of coups from 2011 from the Arab Spring? Wasn't that like an expressed will of the people? Oh yeah, and guess what happened when the Mother Brotherhood was in power? That short period of time when the Muslim Brotherhood was in power didn't they eventually she? get kicked you know out? Didn't they get power? coup? Didn't they get overthrown by the military? He supported Hamas. Yeah, did and then didn't they get didn't they, and how long did the Muslim Brotherhood stay in power for? They got cooed by the secular military. Yes, and now who's in power? The secular military, not the Muslim Brotherhood. The secular military. Yes. Do you think that's just because they have enough force to keep the entire citizenry under their control? Or do you think it's because the citizens probably don't want to be ruled by a fucking Islamic dictatorship and they and the Muslim Brotherhood didn't have the same support? because no, they have the enough force to keep the citizenry under control. Okay. All right. I mean, who was elected in the first elections? Uh, I, in Egypt? I have no idea. The Muslim Brotherhood. Wait, it, for, how, for what year? What, how long ago are we talking? Until they got cooed. The only, the one and only free elections they had. I don't, I can't speak to the integrity of those elections, so I, it's outside of my area of No, knowledge. the one and only free election they had after the Arab Spring, after um, um, their long-term dictator was ousted under Obama and he didn't support him. They had free and fair elections one time. Um, I think the guy's name was Morsi. Morsi. Yeah, Mohammed Morsi. He was of the Mother Brotherhood. He was freely and fairly elected until Al-Sisi, who was the military general, another coup on him so in every free and fair election they have it seems like uh the most religious people get elected what does that tell you it, in the one election they had after the arab spring is how you're going to source the I mean, public that's the opinion only thing, that's, that's the how you're going to source the public to opinion in egypt for the past hundred years well they don't have any other free or fair elections so what do you want me to do i would probably look at the actions of the government and i would see if they broadly enjoyed the, and in the, the one, people or not and only free and fair election in gaza who was elected uh that was when they i think hamas barely how much did the muslim barely, they won outright no they didn't win outright. You know what they, hold on first you know of all they did hold on first of all they hold on first of all they didn't win outright they didn't even win a majority of the seats number one uh number two what did the, what margin did the muslim brotherhood win by when they ran in egypt they won i don't care what margin <sighs> okay you don't have to win by 99 percent to to demonstrate my point
They, they won they, by the largest No, because if they number. win by because if they win by like one or two percent, if the leader, if the people running on the other side was a horrible leader for whatever fucking reason, people not, might, might not be voting for Islamic theocracy, or they might not be voting motivated on religious reasons. They might be voting for a plethora of other reasons. Because that's, that's how you would oh, look I, at an I'm election. You wouldn't that, just I'm assume that they're that voting the just for want, one people because I'm they not have arguing that all the people want uh, Islamic theocracy installed. I'm saying the reason they're so motivated against Israel is ultimately religious. If the Israelis were converted tomorrow to all being Muslims, this conflict wouldn't exist on the global level. It might exist on a uh, just Israel and Palestine, and it might dearly get a footnote in the news, <laughs> but it wouldn't be this. Why this do you assume? Why you do you assume? Why do you assume? Of protesters. Yeah, why would you assume that that wouldn't be the case when other Muslim countries have huge issues with other Muslim countries? Because that proves my point. When other Muslim issues have huge issues where hundreds of thousands die, you don't have global Muslim protests against it. Why do you keep pointing to global Muslim protests? I'm talking in the Middle because East. Because that shows I'm the attitude It doesn't of the show people. anything. No, it doesn't. Global protests. does pro not show anything? Okay, I can't argue with this. If, if you think that like a protest like shows like the will of the people, I think that governments maintaining like it leadership. No, it people. doesn't. It doesn't show anything. It shows you what's on TikTok for the day. That's all a fucking protest shows you. If you want to see what people support, you look at the actions of the military and you look at the actions the government takes. That shows you what the people support. Not a fucking protest. What no, a retarded way to look at politics. Yes, it does. Is not Hold on. Wait, of the will I'm sorry. Of people. The Wait. dictators are not reflective of the will of the you people. You don't think that military dictatorships don't have to worry about what their populations will support? Military they have to worry about feeding the population. That's yeah, about it. Of course, yeah. And do you, what do you think causes fear in the population? Is when the military or the dictatorships are falling too out of sync with what their populations want. Militaries feel pressure, and military dictators feel pressures on their populations all the time. You don't think that Putin is worried about getting cooed by people like uh, Prozogi or whatever the fuck, or any of the other people in fucking Russia if he loses legitimacy as a leader? He can't just say, I'm a dictator, there's no problem for for me um i don't think he's worried no i don't think he's worried right now okay i, I don't think i'll see I, I don't think you pointed to the actions of lcc is demonstrated of what the will of the people is which is why if there was the will of the people was demonstrated if you took conducted a poll in egypt if they wanted them to uh join uh against israel to, to defend gaza or attack israel you would see a vast majority in support same with jordan same with just about every Muslim country. If you took the attitudes of Muslim countries on Jews, it was like in the 95% of it is completely... Why, why uh, then, why are all of these nations so reluctant to go to war with Israel on behalf of... Because they'll get their asses kicked. Then why didn't think then they would why get their asses did, kicked, why did, they would have gone to war. Then, then why, does, why does Hezbollah do it? Why does Hamas do it? Getting their asses kicked didn't bother Hezbollah them. Hezbollah is, is, is not... Because Hezbollah, first of all, Hezbollah... First of all, Hezbollah hasn't fully fully um, joined in because they're deterred for now. But Hezbollah is working for Iran. So if, if Lebanon gets fucked over, Iran's still intact. So Iran doesn't give a shit. Hezbollah what? Wait, is hold a on. State no, what? State. I don't know what that. I don't know how that responded to my question. So first of all, Lebanon is a unique exception in that there's a large percentage of the population that is not Muslim and is not motivated by attacking Israel. But the Muslim pers- po- uh, portion of the population that's is. fine. But now you're making decisions that's that aren't why, based on, on the, so, uh, these decisions term. aren't on religious conflict. Then they're what for security of your country? Which conflict? Well, on any of them. So you're saying that the surrounding Arab states won't you go to war me, with you? Asked me why they haven't attacked Israel, and I told you. If they thought they could, they can win in a fight against Israel. They would absolutely do it. Wait, wait. So because you think that right no, now? You think that, if, you no, think that if, there would be no greater glory in the think, Arab world yep. than defeating Israel? You think that if you think that right now, you don't think that Egypt, um, you don't think that Egypt, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, um, Iraq, and Syria, if they were to join forces, you don't think they would beat Israel in a war with Hezbollah and Hamas? No. Helping? If, if 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 Israel was losing the war, they would nuke all the capitals. Okay. Do you have anything else for us? And I don't think they would win in a conventional war because if you got to move those troops that far, they would be bombed way, way ahead of time. By who? By America or by Israel? No, by Israeli aircraft, which is the number one air force in the region. Doesn't Saudi Arabia have a fuck ton of planes and everything now? Yeah, if they could fly them. Uh, I don't know if Iran would loan them pilots or not. Okay. Um, anything else for us? Uh, I want to just give a brief... Uh, mention of someone you should look uh, look up her name is Ainat uh, uh, E-I-N-A-T and last name is Wilf I, d- no, W-I-L-F she has if you want to uh, just dip your toes into what she has to say she has a lecture if you just type her name into YouTube 
it's like I think the second video that comes up, it's titled Unraveling the Palestinian the Israeli Palestinian Conflict, an insightful exploration of history. It's two months old. If you watch that video, I think a lot of what's going on will be I think she does the best to explain it, in my opinion. Gotcha. Okay. Well, have fun. All right, thank you. Yep. Bye.